All right, guys, as you can see, we've got something extremely special lined up for today. I'm no longer in South Africa. I've traveled clear across the continent of Africa, clear across the continent of Europe, and I'm standing in East Sussex in the UK at the Air Arms factory. I don't often do trips like this, but I've decided I need to come out here to visit one of my favorite air gun manufacturers. I'm going to be getting a complete factory tour to see how all these rifles are made and to see all the processes they go through and to, to meet the guys, the guys behind the guns. We're going to be taking the time out to speak to one or two of the brains behind the company and I'll be asking them questions that I think you as viewers from around the world might like to know about the history of Air Arms and the products. I'm very grateful to be here but I don't want to waste any more time. Let's go straight inside and let's check out how these things are made. Initially we were a, an in, a precision engineering company and we did a lot of um, subcontract work and one of the jobs that we did was we produced gun parts for um, a company called Sussex Armoury who were based in Housham. To cut a very long story short they basically went bust and NSP who is the, the main company were left with a huge quantity of machined parts that you know, cost us an absolute fortune and it was like, well, what are we going to do with these parts? So we, my father being very clever, spoke to the receivers and at that time we bought the rights to the rifle so that we could build and sell them ourselves. And that proved very successful for us, but of course it didn't seem right selling an air rifle under the brand of NSP. So in 1983, Air Arms, the brand, was born and um, from that time on we've just developed and we cut back on our subcontract work to concentrate on building um, the Air Arms profile and expanding the product range. As time went on, um, the air guns become more and more busy and slowly sucked up quite a lot of the factory. So we still do a small amount of subcontracting work, but the air guns are now so busy that it takes a lot of the resources. NSP Engineering um, was basically made up of my father, Bob Nichols, um, Colin King, who was the then general manager. And they brought in a guy called Bill Sanders, and he fell in love with the air rifle side of the business. and he. he basically embraced it with everything that he had and Bill Sanders was real, the real driving force um, in the company pushing forward and, and developing new products and it was a real blow for us when we lost both my father and Bill Sanders in 2011 stroke 2012 and of course when they both passed away within six months of one another it was like okay so how are we going to move forward because you know nobody really knew the story behind air arms or the team behind air arms um, and it, it it was quite shocking to a lot of people actually because they the rumor mill was rife air arms was going to be sold air arms was no more um, but little did they know of little old me in the background um, i've been with the company since i was 16 years old and there was no way that i was ever gonna walk away from this. This has been my life and my sister's life. So moving forward it was important that we maintained my father's principles and his ethics and um, I think we've done that very successfully. We also took that opportunity to take a look at the company as a whole and see where our failings were and see where our successes were and to work on what we felt were our failings um, and to improve those and I think we've again we've touched that the new management team have touched on that very successfully and now Air Arms is probably a, a brand that everybody within the industry um, watches and looks at and, and is waiting to see what we do next. I think that we've been successful for a number of reasons actually and, and I would like to think that those reasons are because we are extremely hard working. Um, the team here are very passionate about what they do and how they do it. We have 
uh, the foresight of the owner, Bob Nichols, who who was very business orientated, so he didn't look at things. He looked at things with a, a sort of a global view, as, as opposed to a very focused one, on one item view. So there, 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 you have good financial management. You have the good product, of course. The product was well designed. It's well made. Um, we strive very hard to make sure that things are correct. They're not always correct, but we do try very hard to make sure things are correct. We try to use the best materials, the best suppliers for stuff that we don't control. Um, we try to make sure that the design is as perfect as it can be. We are our biggest critic and if there is something that can be improved on we will do it, there's, there's no question. But also I think we surround ourselves with um, such an amazing group of people that give us give us the feedback that we need, be it positive or negative. Um, you know, if, if there is critique to be had, we want to hear it because for us, that's how we improve and that's how we evolve and that's how we end up hopefully producing a product that the shooter wants to use. There's never, that'll do, that's not, that's not, a, that's not on the table so to speak. You know, we always try to just make it a little bit better. We always listen to comments from outside people from users, from people like yourself, from shooters, general shooters, anybody at all. When, when anyone has feedback, good or bad, it's always a good thing because it comes into a pot, we then look at it, we analyse it, we kick it about and if, if something needs redesigning, something needs material changing, if we've just blatantly got it wrong and it's no good, um, you know, we try to address that as soon as possible and, and do something about it So therefore give the shooter what they want. And giving the shooter what they want at the end of the day is what I think will make success and does make success. And that's what we've done all along, so we hope to keep, keep on doing that. I think possibly, again I would like to think, it's because um, air arms are in touch with the shooter. It's very important for air arms to produce products that the shooters want to use and so therefore as I mentioned before, we surround ourselves with people that we trust within the shooting field um, and they give us a lot of feedback and we take that feedback on board and we, we, we discuss it in meetings and again I think it's making sure that we produce a product that people want to use. Um, again the quality side of things, we are so particular about the quality and I, I think we're victims of our own success actually in that area because the consumer will not expect anything but the best from air arms and air arms expect nothing but the best from air arms um, and that's why we, we probably do over engineer um, a lot of our parts, we probably do over finish and over polish but it, it's important for us that if we can do that and we can offer that to the consumer then that's what we're going to do and I think also we never lose sight at the end of the day we're all consumers we all work hard for our money and when we spend our money we want to be sure that we're buying the right product and it's not losing sight of that it's not losing sight of the importance of the customer and how the customer feels and that good feeling when they open the product and there it is and it's like wow I can now take this out of the box and I can go and use it. All those factors are very important for us to ensure that the consumer gets that feel good factor when they purchase one of our products. We have, we have always had a passion for it. The, the old salesman Bill Saunders was, was very very passionate about air guns and as you've probably seen from Claire she's very very passionate about air guns. Um, myself and Alan, although perhaps a little bit more on the nerdy side of things, are fairly passionate about it all. And I think all that helps, all that, all that goes in the pot to make it as it is. And I think also Air Arms has a very, um, it's very family orientated. We're, we're fa we are a family owned business and the staff here have been here you know, for many years. It's a team, we're a team that has worked well together for many years and so we, we have that family feel and we want people, we want the consumer to feel that when they buy an Air Arms product or they wear the Air Arms badge that they are part of that family um, and again it's never taking anything for granted it's always how can we improve what can we do to ensure that we're providing the right product for the right market A 
a difficult one to, to, to judge actually because of the different places in around the world they go to now. Um, I think the 410 is still extremely popular. I think there's still the traditional view of guns with a bolt action and so on. So I think that attracts a lot of people. That particular model has been around, we were trying to work it out actually, about 18 years if we include the original S300 series. Um, and although that rifle is 18 years old, that the rifle that the consumer purchases today is not the same rifle as it was 18 years ago. And that's because of our rolling development ethic that we have. Um, and we continually look at ways um, to improve, even if it's just like a material spec or an O-ring, you know, if we feel or we've discovered something that works better than the previous one, then then we inco we incorporate that within the within the product range. Um, the consumer doesn't even know, you know. Um, the 510 is becoming more popular as more younger people come into the sport and attitudes change, the digital age is here, so people are, more, are happy to accept change. So they realise that the side levers are easier to cook uh, and easy to use. To the untrained eye, it probably looks no different, aside from a, a few tweaks here and there, but internally we're constantly looking at materials and the composite of materials and which material will, will work better in specific areas. So why it's been successful, I think because it is a truly good quality, highly accurate product. And again, that's because Air Arms will never compromise. We will never compromise on quality and we will never compromise on um, our component parts and how we produce them. Um, and I think that means that that rifle it's going to last you a lifetime. It's an investment. It's a product that you can hand down to the next generation because of that solid British engineering. I think um, the 410 also is, not necessarily the right word, but pretty. It's, it's, a, it's a nice looking gun. It's a traditional looking gun. There's no lumps and bumps. It's got nice lines to it. It feels good when it's in your hands. Uh, and I think all those, those things go to help making the 410 the most popular rifle. <laughs> well, again, it goes back to listening to what the markets need and we certainly recognise that in our overseas markets there is a demand that um, is different to that of the UK. You have to supply what people want to use in any given country. Um, there's many, many rules and many, many disciplines all around the world and it's always a massive learning curve. Every time you move into any region, any country, you have some countries that are super low powered, some countries that are velocity mad but don't necessarily mind about foot poundage. Some people want more foot pounds but they don't mind about velocity. You have the more open countries that have anything at all. I think we would be foolish not to address any given area because you're just, you're just going to get wiped out by people who are addressing things that people want. Making sure that in any individual country or individual region around the world you're supplying what they require. It's difficult to keep up with trends and fashion because there's trends of fashion in again as, as there is in anything else. And some of them are fleeting, two or three months everybody wants this and then no one talks about it ever again. Uh, years and years and years ago it was all super high mounts on, on field target rifles and it was super low mounts on field target rifles and, and trends of fashion has changed. But fundamentally if you give any given region what they require and what they want for their shooting discipline style then um, well, domination should be achievable. <laughs> the next five years is absolutely crammed with uh, new projects and new product ideas and it's, it's a nightmare trying to prioritise which one we should do first but you know we've got some great stuff coming through next year so it's very exciting and hopefully those new products will um, reach those export markets in a way that um, we haven't achieved so far. Fantastic. I think that's the one people want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> you know where I'm coming from. Mm. I can't give too much away. <laughs>